such informative uh, webinar series as webinars uh, this is the seventh of its kind and uh, let me welcome all the respected dignitaries and the participants to this uh, webinar uh, today which we are conducting i especially welcome uh, shrimati kirti ifs uh, principal uh, forest training school walaya ma'am is with us today i welcome my teacher as well uh, professor dr arvin sir sir is with us and ma'am ma'am is there our uh, beloved uh, patron uh, my uh, good friend uh, sri abdul rasak is here and all other team members of icfsa and everyone who is there in this webinar series i welcome one and all once again and i welcome especially our today's uh, distinguished speaker dr muhammad rahim and uh, as far as uh, myself is concerned and team icfsa is concerned dr rahim we are very fortunate that uh, you are today with us to deliver a talk on uh, cptd which is most relevant topic in policing and the practical application of what uh, criminology criminology uh, we are learning and how we can apply that uh, particular practical aspects to the uh, day to day policing when we are, we are talking about this topic we actually we got an eminent personality in this field especially in the field of criminology uh, dr muhammad rahim kalam uh, kamaluddin is a criminologist and a senior lecturer in the faculty of social sciences and humanities at the national university of malaysia he is also the program coordinator for policing studies in royal malaysia police dr rahim is the founder and president of the malaysian criminological and correctional association he earned his bachelor's degree in forensic science with first class honor from university saint malaysia in the year 2011 he is the recipient of the chancellor's gold medal and royal excellence gold medal of university saint malaysia he completed his phd in criminology in 2015 his phd research probed into profiles of incarcerated male murderers in malaysia which is a pioneer study at the national level in malaysia his research interest include criminal psychology social ills forensic criminology violence and crime prevention as well as psychometric and metrics and profiling in 2020 dr rahim has been appointed by malaysia prison department as the head to develop psychosocial rehabilitation module for indian prisoners to date dr rahim has published six books under ukm university press since june 2015 dr rahim has published more than 80 articles in local and international journals he is also the proud recipient of the excellent award in criminology by the ministry of home affairs of malaysia in 2019 dr rahim as i mentioned we are very fortunate have uh, have you with us today for delivering this speech on crime prevention through environment design as we all know one of the crime prevention is one of the most uh, neglected area in international level also in everywhere in as far as policing is concerned everybody is looking into detection of crime prosecution of crime and all these things but uh, as far as the academicians we uh, the academicians concerned what happens is that these preventive measures especially when uh, we are talking about this uh, scenario or this era as the community policing era we are lacking some sort of techniques which can be easily adopted and practically implemented for preventing these crimes i think uh, dr rahim will be handling this session how we can utilize the cptd in all over the world in policing to prevent the crimes so that the better administration of criminal justice not by detecting and prosecuting the cases but by preventing the crime uh, in a uh, better manner so i invite dr rahim to handle this session dr rahim please thank you thank you dr jayesh am i audible to everyone yeah right uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, dr jayesh yeah uh, for the welcoming remarks as well as uh, sandeep sir yeah and also i would like to thank uh, dr siva prasad as well as indian criminology and forensic science association icfsa uh, for inviting me yeah to share a uh, few things yeah uh, regarding cptd yeah uh, it is my pleasure and my honor yeah to share a uh, uh, few 
uh, information uh, regarding CPTED uh, to my uh, with my distinguished yeah, uh, delegates from India, Malaysia, and all uh, other countries. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe I will take like almost like one hour to present my session. Yeah, my topic, and then uh, after one hour, maybe we can proceed with Q and A. Yeah, so I, I will try to. Uh, I was understood that uh, there are some uh, participants uh, are not from criminology background, but they are interested with criminological aspects. So therefore, I would like to deliver yeah, uh, today's topic as uh, with uh, from the layman uh, context, yeah, so that it is uh, easy uh, to understand by everyone. So please allow me to share my slide. Just give me a minute. Is it visible? Yes, doctor. You can carry see on. my PPT, right? Yes. All right. Yes, perfect. All right. Uh, so today's topic will be crime prevention to environmental design, yeah? Uh, principles and applications. Uh, I think this topic uh, will be very suitable, yeah, uh, across the countries because the principles can be applied by anyone, yeah, uh, in, uh, in order to reduce, yeah, crime rates in that particular region or country. All right. Uh, as we know, criminology can be perceived as the scientific approach to study crimes. And criminologists, uh, we mainly focus on three aspects. Yeah. First is, of course, the crime. The second one uh, is criminal. And the third one is crime victims. Yeah. And uh, beside this, a yeah, few of important areas of criminologists that we are looking for is, of course, the criminality and criminal behavior. Why a person commit crime? Okay. What is the modus operandi and so on? And besides that, crime prevention, yeah, crime prevention is also another important component, yeah, uh, in criminology, yeah? because uh, as Dr. Jayesh uh, mentioned just now, crime prevention, this area is always uh, underlooked or always often neglected, yeah, by practitioner. And uh, what I can say is we uh, we are being more reactive than proactive, yeah. So this crime prevention uh, uh, could be one of the proactive. Uh, measure to reduce crime rate yeah and definitely cptED yeah crime prevention to environmental design uh, is one of the part yeah that uh, would be very helpful yeah uh, for crime prevention yeah uh, as we know because criminal activity is offense specific and rational theory suggests that crime prevention or at least crime reduction should be achieved through policies that convince potential criminals to desist from criminal activities or delay their action or at least to avoid a particular target. So therefore, CPTED can be considered as a form of situational crime prevention. Yeah, under cr crime prevention, this CPTED can be, uh, can, uh, is, a, is a form of situational crime prevention. Yeah. As we know, criminal acts uh, can be avoided yeah if yeah the potential targets are carefully guarded yeah and then the second one the means or you know, the ways to commit crime are controlled and the third factor is potential offender are carefully monitored this is very much into uh, routine activity theory yeah? and crime prevention also can be achieved by reducing the opportunity you know, for people to commit particular crime when we reduce or when we block the opportunities for the people, for the motivated offender to commit crime, and therefore we actually can reduce crime. Yeah? So this aspect is known as. Dr. Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, yes, doctor. Just, uh, there is a echo from your mic. Just keep a little bit away your mic and speak. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank yeah. You, doctor. Sorry. All right. Okay. 
is it better now go on doctor carry on all right okay so uh, as i said earlier all right crime prevention can be achieved when we block the opportunity yeah when we block the opportunity from people to commit the crime therefore the chances for the for a crime to occur will be lesser and this is known as situational crime prevention and this term signifies that crime can be prevented or displaced through the use of residential architecture architectural design yeah this is uh, we are we are we are moving into cptd when we uh, design yeah when we modify the residential architecture yeah and that eventually can reduce the criminal opportunity and therefore reduce crime to occur for example a, a well lit housing project yeah can maximize surveillance and therefore intruders or the perpetrator uh, uh, would think twice before entering into that housing project for example and crime prevention through environmental design or also known as cptd assets that community home owners house owners planners or even developers yeah housing project uh, developers and architects can play a greater role in protecting the community and themselves from crime by integrating these cptd principles yeah these uh, cptd principles and concept into the design and management of the physical environment so uh, in this connection uh, having said that we can say that cptd Uh, can be viewed as a subset of the total set of measures required for effective crime prevention and control yeah and this cptd seeks to enhance the safety of development and minimize the opportunity from crime to be committed here the 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 gist yeah the underlying concept of cptd is we modify the environmental design in order to reduce the crime to happen so that is the the underlying concept of cptd so the basis of cptd as i said is that a proper design and effective use of the built environment can actually reduce the incidence and fear of crime and this cptd is not only useful for criminology is not only used for police officers but it's also will be very useful for architects and civil engineers yeah it will also will be very useful uh, engineers from built environment so that they actually can design uh, 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 an architecture that can actually reduce the incidence and fear of crime and uh, for your information this cptd concept can be applied without interfering the normal use of the space we know uh, we don't need an, an any extra space yeah but with cptd all right it should start uh, from from the scratch i mean when when you want to build a house or when you want to come up with a housing project an engineer an architect or the criminology criminologist should apply the concept of cptd yeah so that it will be very useful later especially to reduce uh, the incidence of crime yeah and it is easy to apply cptd it is actually very easy to apply and can be economical as well yeah to implement especially if it is done early at the planning design stages of a project it is no use for you uh, if let's say we already came up with housing project we already build the houses and then later we want to apply cptd that uh, that uh, won't be an economical yeah rather it will be it is advisable to integrate this cptd since the beginning so that will be economical as well yeah so in a nutshell uh, cptd is a multidisciplinary field which is not only useful for criminologists it also will be very useful for architects engineers from a built environment on deterring and reducing criminal behavior through better environmental design so this is the keyword actually yeah by modifying the environmental design yeah we are actually reducing the criminal rate so i will give you few principles and few examples so that it will be very clear for all of us there are actually main uh, four main principles under cptd 
Yeah, I will explain one by one. The first one is natural surveillance. The second one is natural access control. The third one is territorial reinforcement. And then the fourth one is maintenance and management. The fourth one is very important. Yeah, maintenance and management is very important. It's, a, it's, a, it's also known as a key, key principle in CPTED because without this, this CPTED won't be sustainable. Yeah. So uh, in respect of these first two principles, which is natural surveillance and natural access control, the term natural here refers to de deriving surveillance and access control as a byproduct of normal and routine use of the environment. Yeah. So I will go to the first principle, which is natural surveillance. Yeah. The fundamental premise is that criminals do not wish to be observed. Yeah. Uh, we actually uh, conducted study among burglars uh, in Malaysia, yeah, among uh, robbers yeah, uh, regarding the MO, yeah, about the modus operandi and what are the, uh, the strategy yeah, that they use before they commit burglary or before they commit robbery. Yeah? One of the key uh, findings, yeah, one of the key criteria uh, they, that the criminals shared uh, with us is they do not wish to be observed. So that is one of the uh, key findings here. Yeah? Surveillance or the placing of a legitimate, a legitimate eyes on the street increases uh, the perceived risk to offenders. This may also increase the actual risk to offenders if those observing are willing to act when potentially threatening situation develops. So, the primary aim of the surveillance is not to keep intruders out, but to keep the intruders under observation. So I will give you one example here. For example, here, yeah, this is the study uh, from Brown, yeah, from University of uh, Utah. Yeah, burglarized houses had less visual access to immediately neighboring houses then did not burglarize houses. For, for example, from, from this picture, yeah, we can see uh, the, 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 the bushes, yeah, uh, the, the, the trees are not well trimmed. Yeah? So this actually gives opportunity yeah, for the burglars, for the intruders to enter or to break in into this house easily because they know that when they go into this house, right, they are not observed by others because simply because their presence are blocked by these bushes. So therefore, natural surveillance, yeah, when you trim all these, yeah, so that will actually will, uh, will uh, increase the visibility of the intruders and that actually increase the perceived risk. So natural uh, surveillance uh, basically guides the placement of physical features such as windows, lighting, and landscaping. These features affect how much can be seen by occupants and passerby. Potential criminals are unlikely to attempt a crime. Again, I would like to repeat. Potential criminals are unlikely to attempt a crime if they are at risk of being observed. Similarly, we are likely to feel safer when we can see and be seen. So that is actually the concept, the idea of natural surveillance. Yeah? So here, properly selected, install and maintain landscaping. Allow for unobstructed use of otherwise vulnerable doors and windows. For example, if we compare these two houses, yeah, is the same house actually. Yeah, it's almost the same design. But here, in in the first picture, all right, it is covered by the bushes. Yeah, bushes, trees, and and so on. Here, it is very clear. Yeah, it is not blocked by any bushes, uh, any trees, and so on. So, from the criminal's perspective, if they are given chance to enter either A or given a chance to choose whether they want to break in into A 
or B. All right, now uh, under the natural surveillance, if let's say criminal given a chance to break in into the first house, the one uh, with bushes, trees and so on, the second one, this is B, and the criminals would choose, yeah, definitely will go for the A. Because why? It is easier for them yeah, to hide, it is easier and they also can commit uh, the crime without any fear. If here, all right, the fear, uh, the perceived risk is higher for criminals because they are easily visible to others. So therefore, this is the concept of natural surveillance. So what CPTD actually here uh, trying to say is one of the concept, one of the principles is natural surveillance. So therefore, all right, try to avoid yeah, this type of landscaping. If you want to keep your house or keep your premise safer from burglary or any form of uh, crime, yeah, uh, property crime. So please keep your, your premise yeah, uh, visible to uh, passers and also to others, yeah, pass buyers. All right. So the natural surveillance can be achieved by a number of techniques. Yeah. The flow of activities can be channeled to put more people near a potential crime area. And then windows, lighting, and the removal of obstruction. All right. As I said earlier, the bushes, for example. Yeah. We can remove those obstructions so that it can improve the sight. Yeah. It can improve the visibility yeah, from within uh, and from the outside of the building. So that is the concept of natural surveillance. It is economical, yeah, it is economical and it is very easy uh, to implement in order to reduce crime. Because here, as if we are, if for example, if, for example, if we have this type of landscaping, if we have this type of uh, uh, trees in front of our houses, this actually uh, gives opportunity for the criminals, yeah, to break in into our house. All right. The second principle, yeah, the first one is natural surveillance. The second one is natural access control. Yeah. Here, natural access control relies on doors, fences, shrubs, and other physical elements to keep unauthorized person out of a particular place if they do not have a legitimate reason for being there. All right. I will give few examples here. In its most elementary form, access control can be achieved in individual dwellings or commercial establishment by the use of adequate locks, doors, and window barriers, for example, window grills. So this is also considered a form of uh, natural access control under CPTED. We are actually now modifying the, the, the architecture. We are modifying the environment so that it can reduce the opportunity for the criminals to commit crime. However, uh, when one moves beyond uh, private property to public or semi-public uh, spaces, the application of access control needs more care, definitely. Yeah. For example, properly located entrances, exit, fencing, landscaping, and proper lighting can be subtly direct both food and vehicular traffic in ways that decreases criminal opportunities. I will give you a few examples. For example, here, this is one of the example of natural access control. Yeah? Install plantings and architectural design such as columned gateway to guide visitors to desired entrances. So when we have this type of, but make sure here the, 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 the plants are well trimmed. If it's not well trimmed, that will give opportunity for the criminals to break in. But when it is well trimmed, well maintained, and when there's no other entry point, this is the only entry point. So this is a form of natural access control. For example, another one. Yeah. So these are the few examples. Yeah. In terms of uh, grill, yeah, in terms of fencing, all these are actually giving uh, is, is a concept of natural uh, access control. Here, uh, natural access control guides how people enter and leave a space 
through the placement of entrances, exit, fences, landscaping, and lighting, as I said before. It can decrease opportunities for criminal activity by denying. Yeah, I, I would like to repeat this. It can actually decrease opportunities for criminal activity by denying criminal access to potential targets that can be uh, premise and creating a perception of risk for would-be offenders. So therefore, natural access control and natural uh, surveillance is actually, both of them are worked together actually under the principles of PPTED. Right? Right, while access control is more difficult on streets and areas that are entirely open to public use. If it is our own property, if it is our own houses, it is very easy for us to apply or implement the concept of natural access. But when it comes to an open area or public, it is uh, more difficult. Yeah, it is more difficult. But there are other techniques uh, uh, actually available to control yeah, the access in these circumstances. Yeah, for example, non-physical or also known as psychological barriers can be used to achieve the objective of natural access control. Yeah. Uh, for example, these barriers may appear in the form of signboard, yeah, signage, paving textures, nature stripes, or anything that announces the integrity and uniqueness of an area. For example, uh, putting a signage, uh, for example, uh, uh, be, beware, you are under uh, you are under observation, for example, a signage. Or for example, uh, any signboard uh, in, the, in the public area uh, mentioning that uh, 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 this place is monitored by surveillance camera, for example. So that actually is actually concept of natural access control. So this one we can apply in the, com uh, in, the uh, in the in the context of open space or in public uh, spaces areas. Yeah, but uh, previously, as I mentioned, uh, the fencing, the doors, windows that can be uh, can be implemented in our own houses or, or our own uh, commercial uh, premise. So the idea behind a psychological barrier, for example, the signage, you are under observation. Yeah, uh, this place is under the surveillance uh, camera, for example, is that if a target seems strange or difficult, it may also be unattractive to potential criminal. And also those psychological barriers are actually increase the perceived risk of the motivated offender. And therefore, when the opportunities is reduced, the crime rate or the crime incidents also tend to be reduced. So now the third uh, concept, yeah, the third principle is territorial reinforcement. Nowadays, many housing projects are started to use this concept, territorial reinforcement. Later, I will give you a few examples uh, uh, in Malaysia that using this principle. Yeah? People naturally protect a territory that feel is their own and have a certain respect for the territory of others clear boundaries between public and private areas achieved by using physical elements such as fences, pavement treatment, art signs, good maintenance and landscaping are ways to express ownership. Identifying intruders in this territory is much easier. I mean, in, in these well-defined spaces is much easier. Territorial reinforcement can be seen to work when a space by its clear legibility, transparency, and directness, discourages potential offenders because of users' familiarity with each other and the other surroundings. For example, let me give me uh, give you all an example. All right, uh, there are okay. If do you think uh, it's easy? Yeah. Okay. For example. Do you think that uh, a criminal or a motivated offender is willing to take risk to uh, break in into the palace compared to house? Compared to a house, definitely 
he is not dare to enter or to break in into any uh, palace for example or any uh, authorized uh, building for example or court and so on because why this particular environment or the space for example palace it establish it has an established territorial reinforcement all right people are not dare to enter to uh, into this area all right because they will think that oh it is not easy to break in into these places because of the security features because this uh, place give a wow factor yeah so the intruders or the the layman or the public won't easily enter to into this area i will i will give you a few examples later yeah and then the last principle is maintenance and management this uh from my personal point of view i would i would say that this if a person do not follow this uh the, this last principle which is maintenance and management no point for you to have the other three principles for example no point for us to uh, implement uh, natural surveillance no point for us to implement natural access control no point for us to implement territorial reinforce reinforcement if we don't follow this the last one yeah maintenance and management this is very very important because this will ensure the sustainability yeah this is uh, okay the the last principle this is related to the neighborhoods sense of pride of place and territorial reinforcement the more dilapidated an area the more likely it is to attract unwanted activities all right uh yeah maintenance and management need to be considered at the design stage so that it will be more economical as the selection of materials and finishes will impact on the types of maintenance uh, regimes that can be sustained over time yeah for example plant material should be selected for its size and maturity to avoid blocking of sight line for example right if let's say if uh we are planning to uh, plant this type of trees yeah this type of tree yeah uh, in front of the house yeah because maybe at the, at the, at the uh, when it, when it was small this plant it was small it may look very beautiful so that we plant in front of our our house but later after two or three years it looks like a it it definitely blocks the uh, the uh, uh, it 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 obstruct yeah the visibility and therefore this is not a a good choice yeah to plant yeah in front of our our house so what this maintenance and management principle trying to deliver is before you plant before you choose the type of uh, plants and so on plan first plan earlier so that whatever the plan that you uh, whatever plants or whatever uh, materials that you are going to implement that will be very useful later so that is the concept of uh, maintenance and management all right for example plant material should be selected for its size and maturity to avoid blocking of sight line all right so now for example so this is the uh, few uh, pictures i would like people all right uh, as i said the management and maintenance is very important all right it will be more useful if it if we start with at the early stage at designing stage for example let's say all right uh, can you see my the uh, the mouse arrow can you see my mouse arrow everyone is not visible right hello oh, yes yes so Hello, I'm am sorry. I audible? I'm sorry, it's Dr. 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 Rahim, you can carry on. We can, uh, we can see you more. Okay, all right. For example, okay, you can see a, a tall, uh, few, two tall trees over here. This definitely won't be suitable if you plant these two trees over here near to the window, because this will obstruct. This will block the uh, the sight. All right. 
whatever all right okay people may crawl yeah may people may break in into the window is not visible to others because it is blocked by these two tall trees all right so therefore this type of trees is suitable to be uh, planted over this area compared to this area so therefore if you are a, a housing project uh, manager or you are you are you are landscaper you should design this at earlier stage so that it will be very useful yeah so that's why the concept of cptd is will be very beneficial not only for criminologists it also will be useful for house developers architects and so on for example this is a good concept of uh, cptd you can see these uh, trees are planted over here because these trees does uh, did not okay do not block yeah the the here yeah uh, this window all right and then the fence yeah if you see the fences is not uh, is not tall if when because you can, we can see in in some housing project the fences are are very tall actually all right when the fences are very tall that actually give opportunity yeah opportunity for the criminals yeah to hide and they can do uh, they can be more daring yeah they can be more brave uh, to break in into that particular premise because they feel uh, the, the 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 perceived risk is lesser but here all right for in this in this situation all right when the fences are not very tall all right so uh, when uh, the intruders all right when they enter they always have that fear that people are actually observing them right and therefore this area is not a good target for the uh, burglars or even robbers yeah all right so another concept yeah for example this is the two uh, uh, scenario yeah two two pictures okay you you can see okay there there are some trees in front of the houses yeah here is clear so this the, the first picture yeah the, the left hand side again yeah, this this picture uh, the 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 environment yeah the environment yeah the situation permits the or give opportunity for the criminals yeah to hide to break in and so on yeah but here it is very visible to everyone even the the uh, pedestrian who pass by this place all right uh this this house is very much visible right so therefore the perceived risk for the criminals to enter into this type of houses is higher and therefore they are not uh, brave enough to go all right but remember but remember uh this cptd rules out the concept of uh, uh addiction yeah because some uh uh burglars some criminals are intoxicated yeah uh, with drugs for example right so when when they are intoxicated uh, with drugs for example methamphetamine yeah uh, they don't mind yeah whether people are observing or not observing yeah because of the psychopharmacological effect of the drugs so this actually rules out all that uh, psychological and pharmacological effect yeah so again so when we can see in this picture yeah in this picture look at the, the trees that they plant yeah look at the trees that they plant yeah uh, the trees limp up trees all right so that it's it's not very short it's very tall and it is very visible actually yeah many uh, many motor vehicle theft yeah many motor vehicle theft uh, in malaysia are uh, happened uh in the places uh where it is uh, obstructed yeah uh or it is not visible to public people or the pass byers yeah that is the one of the uh, 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 criminological findings that we derive from one of the our study so for example this is before cptd and this is after cptd yeah the same house actually the same house so look at this this is definitely yeah give opportunity for the criminals to commit crime yeah so this is a, a concept of 
natural surveillance concept of natural surveillance one of the principle all right so i would i, I would ask here okay this is a okay from left hand side this is a b c yeah a b c right uh, can someone answer which situation or which type of uh, street light give opportunity for the criminals to commit any crime a b or c anyone b yes b, b. Some, right? yes definitely the answer is b all right which one give least opp opportunity for the criminals to commit crime b. a b c b a a c so, sir so I, i'm just giving three option a sir b a this is b the yellow light is b and this one is c so among the b light among a b c which one giving the least opportunity c sir c sir c c, yes. c. okay yes c so this is a form of natural access control and also the concept of natural surveillance under cptd so therefore all right before you come up with a with a when when at the designing stage you already uh, as a, as a, as a designer as a criminologist as a house uh, housing project developers you must design what type of trees that you want to plant what type of landscaping what type of street lights yeah so that it will be more economical if let's say if without any research if or the housing uh, project developer they don't have this uh, uh, knowledge of cptd he will he his most probably will go for b because this is very common but later when the when there are when there are more incidents of crime and then people complain lodge report all right and then when criminologists advise to change the the type of street lights so they have to change to type c so this is definitely uh will incur yeah uh, some cost to the developers or to the house owners and so on or to the local municipal council for example so therefore cptd it is very much advisable yeah to integrate the concept of cptd at the designing stage so that it will be very economical and as you can as i said earlier all uh, this uh, cptd implementation of cptd does not uh, interfere any space uh, we don't need any extra space to implement cptd it is within the space all right now i would like to give you few applications of cptd in malaysia maybe uh, if you are uh, maybe for example dr jayesh uh, may, may can uh, advise yeah uh, to your authority okay maybe they can they can replicate yeah this type of steps for example those days yeah in 90s or in early 2000 this is the atm uh, machine yeah last time the banks the atm counter is not made from the mirror it is fully blocked with the shut shutters am i right those days right even the even the uh uh for example mini market supermarket those days it is fully blocked it is fully closed no one can see uh the things inside i mean the outsiders cannot see yeah after the office hours for example it is fully closed all right but now the concept has changed yeah people aware the concept of cptd and they are started to implement for example in malaysia all the bank most of the banks and the atm counters yeah are visible to outsiders yeah to uh, pass buyers we can we actually can see the people inside the atm for example we can see the office we can see the mini market because they use uh, glass uh, walls instead of brick walls this is the concept of natural surveillance principle of natural surveillance under cptd so now well lit yeah even at night yeah so when you have this type of uh, setting yeah when you have this type of setting right the criminals 
yeah the criminals are not there to enter and commit crime or do any snatch theft and so on why because everyone are i mean uh, this this thing is is visible to everyone so therefore they it increase the perceived risk for criminals as as we know rational choice theory yeah uh, again uh, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, theory uh, under criminology rational choice theory yeah so when the perceived risk is higher the criminals all right the chances for the criminals to commit crime is lesser right this is one of the concept of uh, of application of cctv in malaysia this is the second one yeah this is the concept of territorial reinforcement yeah this is one of the housing project yeah in malaysia eco majestic yeah this looks like a palace yeah but actually this is housing project all right for example now let me ask uh, the participant here when you have yeah this type of home setting neighborhood setting do you think not a professional criminal uh, or i mean a burglar uh, an opportunity an opportunity type burglar for example do you think he is dare to enter this premises to break in the houses psychologically any response any feedback do you understand my question no no Hello? he won't he won't uh, dr rahim yes. uh, they are responding in the chat box oh, actually oh okay all right all right oh, I, I i i cannot see the chat box now it's okay so psychologically this will become a, a barrier uh, this will become a, a hindrance for the people to enter into this uh, area because the housing project uh, established the entire setting uh, which is totally different yeah from another all right by uh, by looking at we can see the the type of roads right uh, the the trees yeah the plant the, the lighting so this will give uh, uh, will give uh, some psychological barrier yeah some, some psychological effect for the intruders not to enter this yeah even for example uh, for example let's say uh, even if we are not belong to this uh, area community yeah this residential area even we although we are not criminals even we are not dare to enter this housing projects because our perception oh this area is safeguarded this area is only for elite if we enter all right without any any permission people can spot us so this type of psychological effects can be uh, can can arose yeah so therefore territorial reinforcement is the concept of cptd that's why now we can see lot of housing project yeah the lot of housing projects they are giving very much importance for this uh, besides houses they are giving very much importance for landscaping yeah for lands landscaping so that it can give some elite uh, uh, image to that particular residential area and that actually will give some psychological effects so that the intruders they don't simply go into these type of areas right and then right so another one yeah uh, Buc Bu uh buchida trees yeah this is under genus Buc buchida all right nowadays in malaysia right many housing projects here yeah, they are planting this type of trees i'm not sure this is uh, is available in india or not okay but in malaysia you can see even at the at the road side even at the housing projects they are planting this type of trees replacing big and shady trees yeah why because this yeah uh, compared uh, compared to the big and shady trees right this type of trees yeah uh, do not uh, block yeah uh, the visibility 
do not block the sight of the uh, past buyers and so on. And we believe this type of trees are uh, uh, environment. Uh, it 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 uh, it add the value of CPTED yeah to reduce crimes yeah, in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Rahim, uh, we lost your uh, screen. Could you share right. your screen? Thank you. Okay, I will share again. I'm about to finish actually. All right, let me share again my screen. Is it visible? Yeah, doctor, carry on. All right. For example, here in Malaysia, these Buchida trees. All right. I think Malaysian uh, have seen this. This is a very common tree in Malaysia nowadays. If you see, this type of trees were not available in Malaysia in early 2000. All right. Just lately, for past few years, these trees are widely planted in many housing projects and also at the road sites. Because why this is uh, at the value of CPTED. These uh, do not uh, block the, the, the scene, do not block the site. And uh, this is a concept of, if we can say, this is more on natural surveillance uh, principle under CPTED. So uh, that's all from, uh, from my side. All right. So again, um, MCCA, Malaysian Criminological Correctional Association, we just established. So we are looking for some international collaboration. Uh, yeah, you can contact us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, participants, if you have Thank any you queries, you can mention in the chat box. Thank you, Mahmoud, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sandeep, sir. Participants, if you have any questions. Dr. Rahim, uh, I'm uh, Dr. Samia from uh, India. I have a question. Yes, doctor. Um, what are the preventive measures that can be adopted uh, when we are out of station? Uh, like uh, our house is locked for a very long period of time. What are the preventive measures? And one more question is, uh, in India, we have an uh, option. When we are out of station, we can uh, report to uh, the nearest yes. police station so that uh, they will uh, protect our house for, for a particular period of time. Is there any option? Uh, like that in Malaysia. All right. Thank you, Dr. Somia. Uh, all right. Uh, you have raised two questions. The first one is, uh, what are the preventive steps, uh, uh, the measures that we can take when we are outstation? All right. If uh, there are a few uh, things that we actually can do, all right. Uh, the first thing is, of course, you can uh, inform the nearby police station. Yes, doctor, it is available in Malaysia as well. For example, if you want to uh, go out station for a period of one week and above. You actually can 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 inform the nearest police station. That could be uh, one of the uh, uh, step. And another one is there are few things that we actually can do. Yeah. For example, when we uh, interview the burglars, yeah, in Malaysia, Malaysian burglars, we ask what are the what are the things, yeah, uh, that they look. What are the criteria that they they look right before they breaking into the houses, yeah? So there are few findings, yeah? I would like to share few uh, criteria that is related to your question, Dr. Somia. First one is they, they, will, they, will, they will tell that whether uh, there are people uh, in that particular house or not. So for that, they have few uh, things to identify, yeah? There are few things to identify. The first one is they will always look for the post box. No, the mailbox in the house. If there are lots of letters accumulated in the mailbox, that is actually a sign for them, yeah, uh, to let them know that there are no uh, occupants, there are no people for, for a longer period, right? The second one is because in Malaysia, uh, some of us uh, we order newspaper, yeah, daily newspaper. And then they will put the newspaper in front of our door. If let's say uh, the newspapers are, are, are accumulated in front of our doors and so on, that actually also a sign yeah, for, the, for the criminals 
uh, that the occupants are not in the house for a longer period of time. So what we should do, right? Of course, this is what we call as community policing. Yeah? So what we can do is we, we also can inform our neighbors, for example, besides informing the, the police officers, you can inform your neighbors yeah, if there are letters, yeah, if there are newspapers or anything, please yeah, keep uh, take from the mailbox, uh, from the letterbox and keep in, in your house. Yeah? So that once I'm back, I will take the, uh, the letters. So these simple things will eventually protect our house yeah, from the intruders from breaking into our house. Is that okay, Dr. Somia? Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Right. Here we also have the same system. We call it the neighborhood watch. Uh, thank you for a very interesting session, Dr. Right. Thank you, Dr. Somia. Dr. Rahim, we have some questions in the chat box. Right. Can you answer some of that one? Sir, can you see the chat box, sir? Yes, 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 Doctor. So. Uh, can we get the PowerPoint on requesting? Yes, yes, can, can, uh, sir, I will pass it to, to the organizer. Yeah, uh, maybe the organizer can pass the slide, right? Sir, please explain, fine. Yes, sir, yes, Sandeep, sir. To the, to the association, sir. You can pass the uh, information to the association, no problem. Okay, all right, all right, okay. All right, uh, sir, please explain signs again. How can it will work as a barrier? Yes. For example, okay, I give you uh, this question is raised by uh, Mustan uh, Sigal. Yeah. So uh, if I, I give you two examples. Yeah. The first one, a space without any signage. Yeah. A space, uh, a place, uh, a premise without any signage. The second uh, place with the signage. All right. Uh, with the signage, uh, this place is under uh, surveillance camera or we, we just uh, uh, put the sign as uh, the, the signboard of uh, CCTV picture all right as an intruder yeah as a person when we go to this place all right our psychology tend to differ yeah tend to be different all right when you go to the first premise without any sign you will be more free yeah, you can do whatever that you want, all right? You know that no, no one is observing you, no one is watching you. But when there is a signage, yeah, when there's a signboard telling that there's a CCTV and so on, right? So that would give you some, some, uh, some effect, yeah, psychological effect that you need to be more careful. People are actually monitoring you. The same uh, concept goes to the concept of uh, CPTD. When we put this signage, for example, right? So that actually will give as a, we, we call it as a psychological barrier for the intruders not to commit crime. I'm, I'm not telling that by having that signage, uh, crime uh, won't happen. No, right? It depends. But somehow we can reduce the opportunity, yeah, because that signage itself uh, acts as a psychological barrier. All right? I think I answered your question, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling down, scrolling down for other questions. I, I can't see any questions. Uh, Dr. Siva, Dr. Sandeep, more like a uh, feedback. Okay, okay, okay sir. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, one more from uh, Mr. Sheikh uh, Shahil. Say it was a good lecture. My question was uh, whatever you, show, you showed was generally for low level burglars and thieves, but for highly experienced thieves and burglars, what are the things that we can do during the development of houses? Yes. Uh, yes. This is uh, whatever that I shared, all right? 
may be applicable uh, for opportunistic burglars, all right? But it also will be somehow uh, will hinder the professional burglars. But for professional burglars, uh, only uh, by having uh, extra lock, yeah, by fencing, that doesn't work. Yeah, you must go uh, to uh, uh, more. Uh, you must strengthen. You must tighten up the security. Yeah, from the technical aspects. For example, uh, the security alarm. Yeah, in Malaysia, uh, when we do the 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 research among burglars. You know, uh, surprisingly, they said when the house is occupied with CCTV alone, they are not afraid to go in. But when the house is occupied or installed with security alarm, then they are not there to enter. Then this was a, a bit surprising for us because we thought CCTV alone could be uh, could be a very uh, strong measure, yeah, to to prevent people to entering. They said, uh, just with CCTV, all right, we actually can cover our face with mask, with helmet, and so on, all right. But with alarm, when there's alarm, all right, when the alarm rang. Okay, we are not there. That that will induce panic, and we don't have that technical competencies to deactivate alarm. But CCTV, yes, we can cover. We know where where is the position of CCTV, and therefore we can cover with a cloth, or we can cover our ourselves by by putting mask and so on. Yeah, face mask by putting helmet and so on. But with the alarm, we cannot. So from there, what we are suggesting, yeah, if you are affordable to install alarm. Yeah, please install alarm as well. Not only CCTV. So, like uh, as it is, we the, the the security measures for professional criminals must be uh, need to tighten up. Yeah, compared to uh, opportunistic burglars. Sir. Can digital security system replace environmental design in crime in crime prevention? Will it be effective? Yes, digital security system will be very much uh, uh, will be very effective. But we must know that all right, digital system has uh, some disadvantages. For example, when you lost the internet connection, no one can assess uh, assess uh, the 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 system, right? So therefore, it will be very good if you have the blended system, digital as well as the environmental system. When you have the blended system, that will give uh, will lead to maximum security, sir, ma'am. I think that's all. Okay, doctor. I would like to pass to okay. Dr. Sandeep and Dr. Jayesh. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, okay thank you, sir. I would like to in, uh, invite our Jayesh sir to conclude our uh, this session. Dr. Jayesh sir. Yeah, thank you, Sandeep sir. Okay, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, carry sir. on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rahim, for uh, giving a wonderful lecture on CPTD. And uh, you have uh, elaborated all these aspects, especially all those uh, four principles in a very simple manner, and which is understandable also. And uh, along with that, I would like to add some two more points, which can be uh, also considered that uh, broken window policing system, that broken window theory can also be added as one of the point here in the CPTD system. So that is also one point which I would like to add. And one question I have seen that uh, that digital security and all these things, these uh, CCTV cams and all these things, uh, which are also a part of the CPTD only, because uh, we are uh, fixing all these CCTV cams and everything as a part of uh, preventing these crimes, burglaries and all these things. And meanwhile, uh, I would like to add one more aspect that is, uh, that uh, the greatest invention in the field of crime prevention may be street lights. So whenever we are uh, just installing these street lights, all of the streets and all uh, burglars and all uh, these people who are committing crimes in the night are reduced in such a manner. That is also there. And again, in digital field, in, in digital platform, if you are telling that uh, what happens is that all these uh, antivirus or malware, all any of these internet security items which is being installed can be considered as a crime uh, CPTD only. Any preventive measures which we are asking, which we are uh, just uh, taking or uh, which we are considering, in the sense that uh, we are giving so much of, uh, uh, we are caring uh, more in uh, 
giving uh, good passwords I means in the sense uh, strong passwords and all these things that that's, that also can be considered or maybe this one as uh, dr rahim told uh, it can be only a blended uh, methodology in uh, prevention of crime we can't uh, tell that okay this is the only way or the only uh, method which we can prevent all the crimes and i have seen some of the questions which is raised by the participants that uh, Uh, we, we, what we will do for this professional criminals at all? Okay, we may have to find some other solutions for this. So this is for uh, generally what we are calling as broken windows. If you are opening uh, some windows or uh, breaking some windows and it is still there for a long time, means the uh, burglars or the criminals, they what they will think is that okay, this can be our target uh, because nobody is there. As uh, Dr. Rahim rightly stated when uh, he was uh, uh, replying for a question uh, that uh, uh, newspapers, mailbox letters, and all these things. so uh, what uh, this cptd mainly intends is that to restrict an opportunity for a criminal for no, uh, doing a or committing a crime that is the major objective or major idea behind the cptd anyway dr rahim you have uh, handled a very wonderful session and i think uh, the, you can see the chat box that everybody is very much interested and uh, they are all commenting that so it is a useful and very simply you have elaborated all these things thank you very much for being with us thank you dr rahim thank you and dr it, thank you everyone yeah